If I ask you to name an Asian car brand, most people will name Toyota or Honda first. That's because these two automakers are world famous for their reliability and performance. It's also the reason they overshadow other foreign car manufacturers like Kia and Hyundai. But did you know that Hyundai is the fourth largest car company in the world? It is ranked fourth after General Motors, Volkswagens, and Toyota. In Asia, Hyundai is actually the second largest car manufacturer after Toyota. Hyundai also has the largest car manufacturing plant. It is a 54 million square foot complex consisting of five factories located in South Korea. This plant employs over 34,000 people. It is, of course, smaller compared to Volkswagen's 70 million square foot plant, but the Hyundai plant produces a lot more cars, an astonishing 1.6 million a year. That's one car every 10 seconds. Here's another thing. Most automakers buy steel from external suppliers, but Hyundai produces its own steel in South Korea. This enables Hyundai to easily access and use high quality steel for its vehicles at a lower cost. It's also why Hyundai cars are often less expensive than Toyota or Honda without impacting quality. In fact, Europe took notice and today Hyundai sells about 90% of all of its cars in the European market. Along with Europe, the popularity and demand for Hyundai cars has spread to North America as well. The word Hyundai in Korea means modernity. This makes sense given that the company's current marketing slogan is new thinking, new possibilities. The Hyundai logo is more than meets the eye. Many people think it's a slanted H, but it is also more than that. It's also a stylized outline of two people shaking hands. So who are these two people? One represents the Hyundai company and the other is the customer. The handshake symbolizes the trust and satisfaction between the company and the consumer. What's more, the oval circle around the H bad signifies Hyundai's global outreach. Let's talk about Kia. The word Kia translated in English means from Asia. Kia's motto is the power to surprise. And boy, is this company really capable of surprising. For instance, like Hyundai, Kia Motors also owns one of the world's largest car assembly plants in South Korea. A new Kia car rolls off the assembly line every two minutes. According to one study, Kia ranks third in the number of reviews after Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. Did you know that Hyundai and Kia are the first and only automakers to use a lithium polymer battery in their Hyundai Sonata and Kia Optima hybrids. The advantage of these batteries over lithium ion batteries is that they are lighter, more compact, and have a higher energy content per cell than the conventional lithium ion batteries used in other hybrids. Going even further, in an attempt to take the guesswork out of battery replacement costs when buying a hybrid, Hyundai was the first to offer a lifetime battery replacement warranty for its hybrid vehicles. That's not too surprising. If you consider decades ago, Hyundai was the first car maker ever to offer a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty for all its combustion engine cars. At the time, it was the best deal a car maker had ever offered. All in all, we can say that both Hyundai and Kia are quite unique brands that produce good quality cars. By the way, if you didn't know, Hyundai and Kia are related, and not just because both of these companies are South Korean. Today, Hyundai actually owns nearly 34% of Kia Motors. Kia used to be completely independent, but during the Asian financial crisis in 1997, it filed for bankruptcy. It was at this time that Hyundai outbid Ford and initially took a 51% stake of the company. While Hyundai remains the largest stakeholder, both brands are considered subsidiaries. That explains why some Hyundais and Kias use the same engine. But now let's take a closer look at the models of the Hyundai Sonata and Kia K5. Believe it or not, the Sonata accounts for over 25% of Hyundai's total sales. Well, this shouldn't be too surprising, considering Hyundai put a special meaning into the name Sonata. In the world of music, the term Sonata refers to a musical piece performed by an instrument. Hyundai's engineers had the same philosophy. They aspired the model to always be at the top of the company's production and sales. The Sonata should be, figuratively speaking, always performed. While the first generation of the Sonata didn't receive much fanfare and was not all that good, it explains why they only sold 1,029 Sonatas the first year, but it later surprisingly turned out to be a top seller of the company. Now after seven successive generations of success, we can say the Sonata has been performing beautifully. 
Let's talk about the Kia K5. The K5 is actually the Kia Optima. It was renamed for the 2021 model year. Along with the name change, it also received an increase in power. The Kia Optima didn't take too much splash when it was first introduced. That was in 2000. However, today it really evolved over subsequent generations. Kia is living up to its model to surprise. Did you know that the 2021 Kia K5 GT outperformed the BMW 330i? This was in tests conducted by Automotive Marketing Consultants Incorporated, AMCI, having a turbocharged inline four with a power output of 290 horsepower and a dual clutch transmission. It can go from zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. That's 0.28 seconds faster than the 255 horsepower turbocharged BMW 330i. And now let's compare the 2022 Kia K5 and the 2022 Hyundai Sonata in more detail. Under the hood, both the models offer like engines, either a 1.6 liter or 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four. Interestingly, despite the same engine performance, the K5 offers better fuel economy both on highway and city driving. K5 is equipped with a turbocharged 1.6 inline four engine that's capable of 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It's a front wheel drive, eight speed automatic transmission that propels it from zero to six miles per hour in 7.8 seconds. The EPA rates the fuel economy somewhere between 27 to 29 miles per gallon city and 37 to 38 miles per gallon highway for a combined fuel efficiency rating of 32 miles per gallon. As for the K5 GT with its 2.5 turbocharged I4 that generates 290 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque, the K5 GT can accelerate to 60 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds. Fuel economy drops to 24 miles per gallon city and 32 miles per gallon highway. The 2022 Kia K5 offers more interior space with an option for all-wheel drive while the 2022 Sonata only comes with front-wheel drive. The standard configuration of the K5 LXS comes with the safety feature called Safe Exit Assist, in which the car alerts passengers who are exiting the car if there are any potential dangers approaching. By the way, the 2022 model has a new surround camera system. Let's contrast that to the 2022 Hyundai Sonata. The SEL Plus and Limited models are both front-wheel drive and are fitted with the same 1.6-liter turbo four-cylinder engine, producing the same 180 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. But it is slightly less fuel economy. The EPA rates it as 27 miles per gallon city and 37 miles per gallon highway. So what's new with the 2022 Hyundai Sonata? The SEL Plus now comes standard with a panoramic sunroof and an upgraded navigation and audio system. System. The Sonata Hybrid Limited also received a solar sunroof. The rooftop of the Hyundai Limited comes with solar panels that can power the battery for up to two miles of range every day. Incidentally, the Sonata Hybrid delivers up to 52 miles per gallon in a combined drive. The bottom line here is that all these innovations help make the car more fuel efficient to help save money. For those who love tech goodies, Hyundai offers some interesting technology. One of them is a remote smart parking assist, RSPA. This system can make the car move forward and back in a straight line without a driver behind the wheel. The driver can stand outside the car and control the system with his key fob. So imagine you need to pull out of a tight parking space, but it's impossible to open the doors to enter the car. With the remote smart pack assist, you can remotely move the Sonata from outside the car. You drive it out in a straight line with an open place and simply open the doors and jump in. Let's hope people decide not to race their cars against each other with no one in them, like remote race cars. For added convenience, Hyundai Digital Key Technology, you can use your Android smartphone as a car key. The system takes advantage of NFC technology, so you can use your phone to open and close the car doors and even activate the engine start system. Another cool technology available to the Sonata is the rear occupant alert with ultrasonic sense. With this system, the Sonata can sense movement within the car for up to 24 hours after you left the vehicle. This is something parents will especially appreciate from Hyundai. Let's say for whatever reason you inadvertently left your sleeping child in the back seat of the car. As soon as he wakes up and moves and the ultrasound system detects his movement and immediately honks the horn, flashes the lights and sends the Sonata owner a notification through text message to alert them of motion inside the car. If you're looking to buy a used Sonata or K5, then here are the years to consider or avoid. Let's dive right in and talk about the Hyundai Sonatas from 2011, 2012, and 2013. These models may contain defects leading to engine bearing failure, overheating, oil consumption, and connecting rod detonation. All of these problems will lead to costly repairs and may even be safety issues, so it's wise to take caution on those model years. As far as good used Sonatas, the ones worth considering are the 2016 to 2018 models. How about the Kia? 
K5. Well, for used ones, namely anything before 2021 model year, they'll be called the Kia Optima. Let's start with the worst years and end with the good. So the worst model year for the Kia Optima is 2011. Actually, that's the year the Optima made its debut. Problem here is engine failure, which might cost on average $4,600 to repair. But it isn't the only bad year to avoid. Up until the 2015 model year, the Optima had various steering problems, fuel system problems, electrical problems, faulty brakes, and paint problems. But for the 2016 models and later, most of the problems have been addressed. So look at those years if you're wanting a used Optima. We're looking at two mid-size crossover SUVs, the Kia Telluride versus the Hyundai Palisade. They share several mechanical components and performance specs, including the engine, tranny, and wheelbase. Although the Kia Telluride, unlike the Hyundai Palisade, is only manufactured in the United States and isn't sold in South Korea. The Palisade, on the other hand, is built in Korea. Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade debuted as a 2020 model. The Telluride is named after a town in Colorado, and it's the largest vehicle Kia makes in the U.S. The Hyundai Palisade was named after the Pacific Palisades, an area of Los Angeles known for its coastal cliffs. The Hyundai Palisade replaced the acclaimed Santa Fe XL as Hyundai's flagship SUV, and in doing so made the Palisade the largest car in the Hyundai fleet. It's a tad over 196 inches long and has 114.2 inch wheelbase. Like its predecessor, the Palisade has three rows of seating that can accommodate up to eight passengers. If you're trying to choose between these two crossovers, well, generally speaking, almost everything about them is technically the same. Both are front-wheel drive with a 3.8-liter V6 engine that outputs 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque and are mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. They share a common wheelbase and are fairly close in size. So both start in a similar base range, though the Kia Telluride has a slight edge with a starting price of $32,000 compared to Hyundai's $32,500. In terms of overall comfort, both crossovers comes standard with eight seats across three rows and each offers a seven seat layout in which the second row bench can be replaced for captain's chairs. The Kia Telluride comes standard with synthetic leather upholstery, where else Hyundai Palisade comes with cloth upholstery. So I give the Telluride points for overall interior look and comfort even then, remember the price is slightly cheaper. You're probably interested in cargo space. With the Hyundai Palisade, we're looking at 18 cubic feet of space behind the third row, 45.8 cubic feet in the third row folded down. For a maximum of 86.4 cubic feet with the second and third rows folded. In contrast, the Kia Telluride has 21 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row, 46 cubic feet with the seats folded down, and a maximum of 87 cubic feet with the second and third rows folded. The Kia Telluride wins when it comes to cargo space. The front wheel drive Kia Telluride has an EPA estimate of 20 miles per gallon city and 26 highway. The front wheel drive Hyundai Palisade gets 19 miles per gallon city and the same 26 mile per gallon highway. With the all-wheel drive versions, both crossovers show the same EPA ratings of 19 miles per gallon city and 24 miles per gallon highway. In terms of reliability, both of these crossovers are related just above average. And look at the factory guarantees. In general, Hyundai and Kia are renowned for the industry-leading warranty coverage, and that's certainly true with both vehicles. Both the Palisade and the Telluride come with 10-year, 100,000-mile drivetrain warranty and a 5-year, 60,000-mile limited warranty so it's a draw. Both crossovers received an overall safety and rating of 5 out of 5 stars from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety are awarded both crossovers with top safety pick awards, which is no easy task. Both crossovers offer a rear view camera, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, driver sleep monitoring, rear parking sensors, and a rear seat warning function to remind drivers to check for children or pets in the back seat Additional features for both models include a surround view parking camera system, front parking sensors, and a heads-up display. I'd say one difference is that the Palisade comes standard with automatic high beam headlamps, which come optional on the Telluride. However, the Telluride comes standard with blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, which are optional in the Palisade and arguably more valuable in terms of safety. So, there are a few things to consider before buying either of these crossovers. For example, some owners say the 2020 Palisade have a certain odor. Hyundai hasn't been able to address the issue. Two Palisade owners filed a lawsuit against Hyundai, stating that the interior smelled of rotten eggs, garlic, debris, and other odors that may induce nausea. On the calligraphy and limited trims, the odor appears to come from the leatherette used in the headdress. However, in other trims, the problem was not present. The 2020 Palisade is also reported to have some windshield problems. It was noted 
noted that the glass was prone to cracking and even the smallest pebbles called significant damage and large cracks. Cracked glass problems were so common with the Palisade that another lawsuit was filed against Hyundai for defective glass. As for the Kia Telluride, there were reports of problems with the heating system, more specifically that the automatic temperature control doesn't allow it to maintain the temperature in the car to which it is set. Others noted that the crossover's OEM headlights are rather dim and that the exterior side lighting isn't as bright as one would expect. Additionally, there were comments about engine knocking, which is likely caused by faulty spark plug wires. Other problems include a software update failure, causing the cars to try to connect to a wireless network instead of the satellite one. Let's talk about the latest models. The 2022 Hyundai Palisade offers several active safety devices, including rear collision avoidance and blind spot collision avoidance systems. These systems are triggered if relevant potential obstacle warnings are ignored by the driver. And all Palisade models feature side mirrors with integrated turn signals. The 2022 Kia Telluride sports its new logo, which appears on the slightly redesigned radiator grill, tailgate, and steering wheel cover. In addition, all models have improved standard features, including a 10.3 inch touch screen, which replaces the 8-inch one, and fully automatic temperature control. Those are basically the changes in the 2022 model. Performance and fuel economy remain the same as the previous year's model. It's been dubbed the Electrified Streamliner. And this past November, the pre-sale of the first edition sold out in 24 hours. I'm talking about the new Hyundai Ioniq 6 that already sold out in Germany, France, Norway, the UK, and the Netherlands. Actually, this was intended to be a limited sales run. Just 2,500 pre-sale units as an experiment, if you will, to test the market, gauge consumer demand, and see whether Hyundai could even compete on the open market. Well, the fast sellout surprised Hyundai itself, not just consumers and analysts. Today we're looking at what Americans can expect from the North American version, when it's coming out, and how Hyundai made it more aerodynamically efficient than even the Tesla Model 3. Here's the thing, the Ioniq isn't a brand new car per se. Actually, in case you aren't as familiar, the Hyundai Ioniq initially started out as a compact five-door liftback with the 2017 model year. Hyundai marketed the Ioniq as the first automobile to be offered without a standard combustion engine option. Instead, the car was sold in either hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and full battery electric options. But fast forward today, the Ioniq 6 is a battery electric mid-size fastback sedan. Now, the limited number of fortunate ones who were able to pre-order can expect to get their hands on the first Ioniq edition sometime between March and April of 2023. For consumers who weren't able to pre-order, Hyundai says that the dealerships will send an offer out at a later date. But look, the pre-sale price tag wasn't cheap. The fully equipped limited edition cost 66,400 euros, which is like $69,800. The standard version was pre-sold at 43,900 euros or $46,000. We're talking $68,500, but it's still a far cry from a Tesla Model S, for example. If you're like me, you're probably wondering if or when we'll see the Ioniq 6 here in the States. Actually, Hyundai officially debuted the U.S. version several weeks ago. The U.S. version is a bit different than the European one. For starter, the European variant is estimated to offer up to 382 miles of range. But in the U.S., its estimated range is 340 miles for the rear-wheel drive model. Now, the Ioniq 6 is built on the same eGMP electric car platform as the Ioniq 5. This means there are many similarities between these two EVs. Hyundai is offering three trim levels in North America that are almost identical to the Ioniq 5 trim levels. With the eGMP platform, the Ioniq 6 is one of the few vehicles in the U.S. with a fast 800-volt charging system. That brings it up there with the fancier vehicles like the Porsche Taycan. The aerodynamics of the American version also differs slightly. The drag coefficient of the Ioniq 6 here is 0.22. Originally, it was 0.21, but that's because it was calculated on Ioniq 6 with digital side mirrors that still aren't approved here in the U.S. yet. These not yet approved digital mirrors replace traditional side mirrors. They capture and then send a feed of what you normally see out of the window onto the LCD displays on the extremities of your dashboard instead. For the U.S., we can expect the Ioniq 6 to go on sale here in the U.S. in the spring of 2023. So far, as of the recording of this video, the price is yet to be announced. Hyundai says it will announce the price closer to the on-sale date. 
Let's talk about three different trims. We have the rear wheel drive standard range version. This trim comes with a 53 kilowatt hour battery, a single rear motor with 149 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. So far, there's no information on the range or acceleration from this particular trim. But seeing the Ionique 5 has a range of 220 miles, we can assume that this trim will likely go higher thanks to its more aerodynamic design. Then there's the rear wheel drive extended range version. This trim comes with a 77.4 kilowatt hour, 255 horsepower, and 258 pound feet of torque. According to Hyundai, this trim will also have a range of 340 miles. And last but not least, there's the all wheel drive extended range trim. This trim comes with two electric motors and a combined 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. It also comes with the 77.4 kilowatt hour that Hyundai has hinted will allow the car to accelerate to 60 miles an hour in under five seconds. But the driving range on this one will be around 310 miles. Evidently, the Ionic 6 will be Hyundai's first car to update its firmware via over-the-air updates. The Ionic 6 will also have active sound design that will use an acoustic design processor to provide unique driving sounds inside the cabin. There's also the Ionic 6's route planner for road trips that will automatically display charging stops along the route. And Hyundai says it even knows what charging stations are in use or broken and it'll automatically filter those out when you're searching for a charging station. Speaking of charging, Ionic 6 owners get up to 30 minutes of free charging charging and electrify America charging stations for the first two years of ownership. And then there's the Hyundai Home. It's a new service Hyundai recently announced. The service offers consumers the choice to have dedicated home chargers, rooftop solar, and energy storage systems, together with Electrum. Hyundai plans to develop a one-stop online marketplace that will connect homeowners in certain states to solar panels, EV chargers, energy storage systems, and local installers. Using this new Hyundai Home Marketplace, customers will be able to purchase a home charger, learn about home, solar, and energy storage, and even access their own dedicated energy advisor, the dedicated energy advisor who will assist in the purchasing process. The advisor will also present customers with three installation bids per project from Electrum's electricians. Right now, current phase of Hyundai Home is available through Hyundai dealerships in 16 states. One highlight of the Ionic 6 is its surprising aerodynamics. In fact, it has one of the lowest drag coefficients of any production vehicle ever made. You'll notice the car has a uniquely streamlined shape and design. That's because Hyundai wanted the EV to offer low wind resistance and high all-electric range. And to do this, they looked at some of the most streamlined shapes in car and aircraft history, in addition to nature itself. Believe it or not, the Ionic 6 was partly inspired by the world's fastest bird, the Peregrine Falcon, which can dive at speeds up to 242 miles an hour. The Ionic 6 has a remarkable drag coefficient of just 0.21, and to put that in perspective, the Tesla Model 3 rates at 0.23. The Mercedes-Benz EQS is one of the few EVs that's slippier than the Ionic 6. Its range is at a 0.20 CDs. Achieving aerodynamic efficiency is no simple task. Remember, aerodynamics is crucial, most especially in electric cars. That's because batteries and EVs are extremely heavy, and all that extra weight makes for lower range and impacts driving stability, performance, and wind noise. That's why Hyundai spent three years to refine the shape and silhouette of the car. They prioritized on streamlining the car and achieving that teardrop shape. According to Hyundai's head of styling, Simon Lulsby, the Ionic 6 design was heavily influenced by the 1947 Stout Scarab. Phantom Corsair and Saab Ursaab. These are iconic streamliner cars. They were the epitome of the functionally efficient vehicle aesthetic. And now Hyundai took that aesthetic and electrified it. In fact, the Ionic 6 has even been nicknamed the Electrified Streamliner. There was also the World War II British fighter planes, the Supermarine Spitfire. Hyundai designers took inspiration from the Spitfire's design of the winglet, which you can see on the side of the Ionic's rear spoiler. This helps absorb the airflow from the roof and reduce drag by minimizing vortices at the spoiler's tip. This winglet also helps to reduce drag by reducing the eddy currents that are generated from the side of the Ionic 6. Even the car itself looks like the streamlined shape, like the wing of an airplane. Many people don't know this, but cooling resistance is responsible for over 20% of total air resistance. That's where the active flap, or AAF, on the front bumper comes into play. The active flap opens when the cooling system needs to run, and when it closes, it becomes unnecessary to reduce air resistance. That's because the Ionic 6 doesn't have an internal combustion engine, so it has a relatively small area that needs to be cooled. Because of that, Hyundai applied an external AAF to raise cooling efficiency by distributing the airflow when it opens. Basically, when the AAF 
is open, it acts as an airflow guide vane. This helps air to easily enter the radiator. Once the flaps close, the active air flap guides the airflow into the tilted air intake and works with the wheel air curtain and wheel gap reducer to improve the car's aerodynamic performance and reduce drag. The wheel air curtain naturally connects with the air flaps. It has a vented hole in the side instead of on the front of the vehicle. When the air flaps are closed, airflow gets concentrated to the front of the vehicle, and that pressure at the front gets distributed to the wheel air curtains. Meanwhile, the air that escaped through the air curtains flows to the outside of the tire to reduce air resistance. If you notice the short front overhang, that was intentional. Hyundai lengthened the wheelbase to maximize the interior cabin space. Now normally that works against aerodynamics, so to fix that, designers made a wheel gap reducer to minimize the space between the front bumper and the tire. So now, the airflow from the front bumper doesn't separate from the wheel, but rather flows over the wheel. By the way, if you're wondering what's behind the meaning of the name Ionique, actually it might surprise you to hear that it's the union of two words, ion and unique. An ion, as you may know, is an electrically charged atom and an essential component of any battery. Especially when you consider that EVs are powered by electric motors and batteries, well now you can see why the name is appropriate. If you're wondering how easy or hard it'll be able to get an INIC 6 here in the States, that's unknown at this time. All Hyundai said for now is that it'll be available at select dealers only. If you're wondering why it'll be limited, well, that's a good question. After all, many consumers assume that EVs are sold in every American state, but actually, it's not entirely so. Some EV makers sell their cars in select states, and that's by deliberate choice. They have their own reasons, of course, but let's talk about the three main ones. The first one is that some automakers have limited inventories of EVs, so they chose to prioritize their sales to states they believe will bring in the most profit. Obviously, that means the state with better infrastructure, incentives, and so forth. The second reason is that certain states have local franchise laws that mandate car makers to sell cars to third-party dealerships rather than selling directly to consumers. Now, mind you, some EV makers don't work with dealerships, but they have their own stores. I'm talking about Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, and Polestar, for example. So you can see how this will restrict some of their sales. And the third reason is states set their own emissions requirements. And since EV makers have set an inventory of EVs as it is, they now just wave it's worth their time to meet a state's emission standards and move on to another state. But what if you have a dream EV and it's not being sold in your state? Well, you can still get your dream EV. One option is to buy the EV directly from the car maker. Brands like Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, and Polestar already have a direct sales business model in place to get around the sticky state franchise laws. Many EV makers deliver their vehicles to a local delivery center. A second option is to buy a used or pre-owned EV. That's because most state franchise laws apply to new cars, not used ones. Or a third option is to directly contact a local dealership in your city about buying an EV from another the state. There have been cases where local dealerships were perfectly fine being the middleman for an extra fee, of course. But now you tell me, what do you think about the INX 6? Do you think the quality and craftsmanship will be better than a Tesla? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.